This episode of the vlog is brought to you by Dehancer. To get 10% off at checkout, use promo code LUTZ. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Richard. I am a Los Angeles-based filmmaker, photographer, and content creator. On today's episode of the vlog, we are talking about Dehancer, an amazing film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Let's get straight to the point. Dehancer feels like cheating. Over the last several years, I've been using DaVinci Resolve heavily in both my professional and personal work. I feel like I really know all the different tools that are at my disposal. I'm always looking for new ways to push my work to that next level, and it has become a program that I really enjoy using. However, one of the biggest challenges that I haven't figured out how to do is just create those really interesting film looks that give a video or a project a certain vibe and like really creates the tone and the texture of the images that are appearing on people's screens so whether that's on their computer their tv or even their phone with that in mind let me show you my workflow when working with dehancer how i would use it how i would set up a project and just share my thoughts and just take you through building up an image so let's jump straight into Resolve. So here's some footage I got a couple of years ago with a Panasonic GH5 that I got with Mira Chris Castro. She's a Pacific Northwest model doing a lot of amazing things in her community. Her info's in the description below if you want to check out the work that she's doing. To start, we'll turn on the color management. It was off because I wanted to show you where I was starting from. From there, we're going to load my node tree that I use on every single project. I'm doing all of my color grading with my Blackmagic micro panel. I made a tutorial about this last year. Be sure to check it out. But with that said, if you don't see my cursor moving around, be sure to look down in the lower left-hand corner where the primaries and different tool sets are. You'll see changes happen there, but you may not see my mouse move. To start, let's work on our exposure. We're going to drop it a little bit globally with our offset. The skin was blowing out just a little bit. From there, I want to turn off the offset and then bring down the darker portions in the lift, bring up the gamma, maybe pull down the um, gain. Then we're gonna jump to our contrast, increase the contrast move the pivot a little bit, maybe a little bit more contrast. And there we go. We got a really good image right out of the gate. It's really strong. I feel it's in a pretty good spot just with exposure and contrast. So we're gonna create a vignette around her, something like that, maybe bigger. Move it down, we're gonna make it softer. We're gonna make it bigger something like that, and we're not gonna track it. It's not needed. We're gonna invert it, and then we're gonna go back to our offset, and we're gonna drop the offset to help people focus just on her in the center of the screen. Turn off my, my window control there, and then as you can see, that's where the grade is. This is where we started, and this is where we're at. But now we're like really wanting to take our work to that next level. We want to like give it a really cool film look. We want to like give it some glow, maybe some halation. That's where Dehancer comes in. And it does a really good job. To get started with Dehancer, we're gonna search for it in our OFX here and type in DEH, which gets us Dehancer. And as you can see, it opens a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here. To close everything, click option on a Mac and just Hit that little arrow key and it closes everything. Personally, I wish it would load like this. It would make it a lot easier to get started. To get started, we're gonna turn on our clipping indicator and then we're going to turn off our film grain. We can come back to that later. From there, we're gonna change our color space. I'm using Resolve Color Management, so I wanna use um, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, but it really depends on what your camera is set up to and how you are configuring your project. From there, we can jump into film stocks and we can start choosing a look. And there's a lot to choose from. Um, there's 63, to be honest, and it's, it is a lot to uh, take in. Um, and it's really hard to understand like where to start. Um, I wish they were a bit more organized they're organized alphabetically, 
So you need to know what you're looking for. Um, but I think it'd be great if they could organize it based off of category. That'd make life a lot easier. In this case, um, we're just going to see what we have. Uh, maybe not, not like Fujifilm Insta. That's not going to work. There's Fujifilm FR100C. No, nah, that's not quite it. Um, maybe Kodak Supra 100. Oh, we're getting there. Kodak Ultra Max. I think the one I want is the Kodak Ektachrome 100. Yeah, I kind of like that. It gives a really warm vibe, which I dig. From there, I'm going to click expand and I'm going to continue to dial in my white and black point. In this case, I need to bring up the whites a little bit just to try and crush the highlights a little bit. They're kind of blowing out a little too much. And I want to bring up the blacks um, to try and... Um, I don't want them to be as elevated. I want them to be a little darker. And you can see my, if I crank it too far, my, my clipping indicator goes nuts. We're not gonna do that, of course. We're gonna go right about there. Jump back to the white point really quickly. Tweak it a little bit more. From there, let's jump down to our print. And let's say, since we're working with Kodak, we'll try the Kodak Endura glossy paper kind of crushes it um, while we're demoing things. Let's try Kodak 2383. And I'm liking that, but we have to jump back to expand really quickly and fix our blacks, which won't take too long. Something like there looks pretty good. Let's play with that a little further. And now we need to continue to enhance our images. Personally, I feel like the skin tones are blowing out a little bit. They're a little too um, clipped for me a little too high. So to fix that, we're gonna come to our film compression here. We're gonna turn it on by clicking enable, and then we can just continue to tweak things. If I increase the impact, you can see those skin tones are coming down. If I play with the white point, that will also impact them to a degree. Tonal range will also help bring them down. And you can see if I turn that on and off, it just like kind of retains the skin tone. I think I went a little too far. So we want to like pull back on that and maybe something like there. Yeah, I'm liking where that's taking us. From there, I'm gonna close my film compression. We're going to now jump down to color head and color head is a lot like printer lights or your offset wheel. Just another way to go about things. Um, so I'm gonna enable that. And we need some color contrast. So I'm going to increase the blue and it's gonna do it globally. You can see it's impacting the, more, the majority of the image. It's adding more blue there. Maybe I'll add some, some green to the image, like so. Maybe some red, give it a little bit more color on those bricks back there. Off, on, off, on, I'm liking it. So those first couple of tabs within um, to answer is where you're gonna set your look. That film, film developer, film compression, expand, print, and color head, that's where you're really gonna be doing the majority of the work to set in the colors and the exposure. From there, you have a number of different other um, tools that can help enhance your look, like halation, bloom, overscan. There's other tools there that are pretty cool and we'll explore that here in a moment. Before we do that, I wanna see if I can continue to push this a little farther, maybe turn on the contrast, see what that does. Fix the gamma a little bit more. Color boost, increase the reds, which are, they get really muddy if I go too far, so I'm not gonna go too far there. Maybe something like that. Helps it pop off the screen a bit more. And then I can also play with this output option and really just dial it in further. You can see that's where we're at now, before, after. So we can really just dial in that look to our liking. And we can also take that look into different places. Like in this case, maybe I will add um, some film grain. Its default is 35 millimeter ISO 250. We'll enable that and you can see there's there's some definite grain there, um, giving it a healthy um, vintage look, which is kind of fun to play with. We can also take it um, further with like adding 
halation, which will make those red tones just pop a little bit more. And we see a lot more fringing between the, the darker areas of the screen and um, the brighter areas of the screen, the places where there's more contrast. Maybe if I zoom in here, you will be able to see it when I enable it on or off. Maybe if I drop it down to eight. Yeah, now you can really see it when I dial it in. You start to see that, that fringing happen when um, you see brighter areas and darker areas of the screen is where you really start to see that fringing. 16 millimeter will probably be a similar situation a little bit, but um, you can see, yeah, you can really see it in Mary Chris's face there. That's a bit strong for my liking. Let's just jump down to 35 and I don't think we need the halation in this case. We'll add some bloom, which is, it's like glow. Just makes things pop off of the screen a little bit more. You can see like there's a glow to our skin now. We can add film damage, which is kind of cool. And this is where it really starts to impact the playback of things. If I didn't have things enabled, um, maybe if I didn't have bloom enabled, when you start stacking these things, it really starts to tax the system a little bit more. So I would stay away from throwing everything at it. I think using um, Dehancer within moderation is the best way to go about it. You also have this film breathe. You can see it like kind of, when you start reducing your film stocks, it just, it gives it a different characteristic to it. Let's jump back here. You can see that there's like some weird like lighting issues going on where it's lights getting into the camera in some ways. You can see it in the brick tones. It's jumping from like that reddish yellow color to a little bit of green happening back there, which is kind of interesting. With the gate weave, if I turn that on and I jump back down to eight millimeter, you can see it like have like this weird like issues of like the camera's having a hard time feeding the film correctly. When I take this gate weave and say I add film damage, I drop that down to like say 16, it's gonna start giving it kind of an interesting look. Gives it more of a vintage vibe. And it's amazing to see um, Resolve being able to do these things and play back um, this stuff. Because normally when you add 35 millimeter grain, it can struggle. Resolve struggles when you start stacking a lot of OFX and it's, it's fantastic to see that it's able to keep up. We're gonna turn things off. And the final thing I really wanna talk about really quickly is this overscan option. Just gives it kind of a cool vintage look that I don't think I would normally use, um, to be completely honest. I don't see myself um, using stuff like this very often. Um, I think I might maybe use it on like a shot here or there to give it an interesting look. But in general, um, I don't think I would necessarily use this on many looks unless I wanted it to have a very specific look and I had a had something in mind but it's cool it's a it definitely like takes that vintage vibe and increases it significantly this plugin for DaVinci Resolve has been something that I've been looking for in terms of my professional workflow it has been something that has made my life easier it has been something that has really helped me take my work to that next level. As a filmmaker, I really wanna find ways that I can create images that are reminiscent of the films that I grew up loving as a kid. And Dehancer in many ways has been the best way to bring those ideas to life. It has been the easiest way to bring those ways to life because a lot of times it has required a lot of nodes and it has required a lot of um, OFX to do the same things. This plugin is truly spectacular and I've had a ton of fun playing with it and I can't wait to continue to explore it and how it could impact my vision and my visuals as a filmmaker. When I first picked up a camera, it was that transition from film to digital and I started working with digital cameras at a very early age and I didn't get exposed to playing with different film stocks. I feel like as a photographer, I missed out on that. With Dehancer, I feel like I can now play with those film stocks in a risk-free environment and really use them to enhance my films and really give it a really interesting look. It's been something I've been striving for for a very long time and to be honest, I haven't found it until now. The cool thing is Dehancer also supports a ton of different cameras. If I jump back into the input tab and jump down to camera, 
and jump down to like say Sony, you can see that it just supports so many different cameras and they're adding new cameras all the time. It's awesome to see Dehancer add all these tools for filmmakers, regardless of what camera they may be shooting on, that they have the ability to use this in terms of their workflow. The other thing that's really cool about Dehancer is they have an ISO app. I haven't had any time to go out and play with it, but it's cool to see that they're providing filmmakers a number of different ways that they can use this plugin and use these tools in different projects, regardless if it's shot on a mirrorless camera, like I have like my Sony here, a RED, or even your mobile phone. It's cool to see that Dehancer is being thoughtful and trying to help filmmakers regardless of what platform they are on. While I've really enjoyed playing with Dehancer, there's also a few things that I dislike about Dehancer. The first thing is it's really tricky to navigate at times. There's a lot of different tabs in this plugin and it can be a little confusing in terms of figuring out where to go and what needs to be done to really work an image up. I wish Dehancer would just load like this. I wish it would load with all these tabs closed and giving me the ability to open them up one by one. It'd make it a lot easier to get through things and just figure out what is going on and what I need to do with things. When you see everything, it is very overwhelming and it's not really inviting and it'd be nice to have it just like this in a state where it's like everything's closed. The other thing that's been a little frustrating has been Every time I want to enable something, I literally have to open up that section of Dehancer and physically click enable. I wish there was a way that I could do it without having to open up those different menus and turn things on or off. I wish there was more of a hierarchy thing, maybe right next to those words input or film grain or bloom. I wish there was like a checkbox there where I could turn things on or off depending on what my needs are. The final thing that I dislike about Dehancer is just the price. It is really expensive to get this plugin for Resolve. The Resolve Studio, I think, is like $300 American. To get Dehancer, that would cost me nearly $450 for Dehancer Pro, which is more than Resolve. So it's really hard to justify spending that much money on a film emulation plugin, especially given the recent announcement that Resolve had at NAB 2024, where they announced a new tool for look development as a OFX plugin for Resolve. It's really hard to justify spending that much money on a plugin like Dehancer when alternatives exist and when you can already do many of these things within Resolve itself. The tools are there, you just have to spend the time to understand them and really start to play with them to really give it that classic film look that you're striving for. But that's all the time we got for this episode of the vlog. If you're using Dehancer in your workflow, I'd love to hear more about the plugin and how you're using it. If there's things I missed, if there's things that I should be talking about in greater detail, I would love to explore this further and I intend to explore this further. If you have workflow tips, if there's certain things that I need to be keeping in mind with my grades, I'd love to hear about it. We are a community, we're trying to grow, we're trying to make the best work possible and we need to work together to pull these things off. If you want to use Dehancer in your projects, you can use the promo code LUTS and get 10% off on checkout. Again, that is promo code LUTS at checkout. But that's all the time we got for this episode of the vlog. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work. Thanks, guys.